help us kick off our No Shave November uh, month. I'm going to give you the final word, sir. What say you? Yeah, uh, I don't think we'll see much shift today in the top 25, at least the top 10. Uh, it's going to be a close game at Michigan tonight. I do think Notre Dame pulls it off. Uh, I mean, you're going to see Auburn drop out of the top 10. They're at the, I think they're currently ranked ninth. LSU's probably not going to win that game going away, but it will be kind of a dominating performance because I think LSU is right there with Alabama, if not a little bit better. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of change in the top 10 this week. So, uh, And Ohio State is just going to put it on Wisconsin because – I mean, Wisconsin football only exists to be ranked fifth and then lose. I mean, that's her team <laughs> motto. When they run out of the tunnel, the head coach gives them this pep talk. And it's like, come on, guys, let's be ranked fifth and then lose because that is their complete existence. That's the only reason why they play college football at Wisconsin is to be ranked fifth in the country and then lose. Happens every single year. Jerry uh, Beard, I appreciate you taking some time and joining us and talking your Michigan homer card against the uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Do you have any final words of wisdom for us, sir? I'm pretty sure Rick just got himself kicked off the Paul Chris Christmas card list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he just essentially I'm, called I'm him, also kicked uh, off the Rutgers Christmas list. <laughs> what, uh, what was the old uh, the coach from the Titans, Jeff? You just called him Jay Jeff Fisher. To Jeff Fisher, essentially. Jeff Fisher. Um, hey, Jeff Fisher, August 8th is Jeff Fisher Day. It's 8 and 8. Yeah, of course. I think we have a chance to see a little right. shake up in the top two. And I think Wisconsin gives Ohio State all they want for three quarters, and it comes down to the end. And then, I, obviously, I think uh, Notre Lame is going to have their hands full this evening. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to wrap it up and put a bow on it. We appreciate you joining us. Rick Riggin, our official college football contributor. Terry Beard, our official uh, Michigan fan, to help us kick off this big battle tonight. Good luck, Irish. Good luck, uh, Wolverines. I'm playing the neutral libertarian card here. (laughs) All right, man. See you guys. See ya. (laughs) Man, always good to have them on. Whew. Sometimes I just got to say, hey, guys, wait, who's, who's the host here? We went from Bag of Wieners to uh, Jeff Fisher to, I mean, we covered the gamut, but we're getting into the NFL talk. Uh, Tony Donahue of the Tony G Podcast joins us. Uh, uh, Ed Kratz on the road up to Buffalo. Mo can't join us, so it's just me and Tony. We'll be right back right here on the Balanced Radio Network. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico 
makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about anything. Here's to the straggly ones. The first ones. The, hey, I look good with this ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The itchy ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The I nearly didn't do it this year ones. And the absolutely filthy ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Sign up now at Movember.com. All right, and welcome back to the balance. 90 minutes in the can. My name is Tom Mark Lassell, Presidente. Great time today so far. Thank you, Matthew Embry up at WSBT in South Bend, our official IndyCar contributor, but also talking some Notre Dame fighting Irish. Big game today against Notre Dame and Michigan. Also, Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest talks to NASCAR in Martinsville. And, of course, he lives in Virginia as well. And so uh, he's a big national fan. And so how about them nationals? I mean, I don't think anybody thought we'd be talking about a nationals Astros uh, World Series. I think a lot of people thought the Astros would be in there. But, man, what a good run they've had. Go National League. Go Nationals. And then, uh, in the, as always, we get off the rails with Rick Reagan, our official college football contributor, Terry Beard, joined us, also a big Michigan fan, uh, talking in, in more detail about the biggest, one of the oldest rivalries in college football, and that is uh, Michigan and Notre Dame. Joining us now is Tony Donahue of the Tony D Podcast. Uh, stepping in and helping us do the NFL talk today. Ed's on the road up to Buffalo and Mo can't join us. Uh, Tony, how is you, sir? Good, man. How you doing? Man, it's a rainy day. It's a good weekend for chili. I'm going to do that uh, and make some chili tomorrow. And, you know, I, I shaved everything off yesterday for No Shave November. So you in? You're going to No uh, Shave and throw the razor away for the month? I'm going to have to pass on that one this year. I know. You're doing the job interviews and all that stuff. But, hey, I tell you what, guys, this is our annual kickoff, No Shave November. We do this every year. Just remember, the more you grow, the more you save a bro, and it's a great cause. And if you've got some money to donate, go ahead. we got our group link, the balance linked up on, on Twitter, and uh, go. We do this every year. And by the end of the month, I look like Santa Claus, according to my granddaughter, but it's all for a good cause. And it saves you like, I don't know, three, however long it takes you to shave, uh, three, five minutes in the day. And that all adds up, Tony. At the end of the day, it all adds up. Look at how much time you get back in your day by not shaving. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's talk a little NFL. I mean, uh, like I said, Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, is on the road to Buffalo, so he's, he's not going to join us. We'll get to the Eagles here in just a second. But since we both live here in Indianapolis, and our homer card is the Indianapolis Colts, I was at that game last week. What a fantastic win that was against a huge divisional rivalry against the Houston uh, Texans. I almost said Astros. I got them on my mind uh, against the Houston Texans, and the roof was open. It was a great, great win. I enjoyed being there. Of course, tomorrow uh, the Broncos come into town, and, and you know I, I, I hate to, to liken the Broncos to to the Raiders, but if we get too comfortable in our own skin, the, the Broncos can come in here with that defense and and uh, give us a, a, an L as opposed to a W. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the defense is tough for the Broncos, um, and the Colts seem to just play really close games this year. I think you know they've all come down to a final possession, basically. I like the Colts in this one. I do like them to cover the five and a half. Um, they're the best team against the spread this year. Jacoby Brissett uh, has been playing well. We saw Zach Pascal step up last week. Uh, the defense has played really well. Um, I just don't trust Joe Flacco at all, 100% don't trust him. Uh, I think the Colts, I think it's going to be a back and forth game. The Colts get a big stop late, uh, maybe a turnover. Uh, I'm at Colts 27 20. Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I'm right there with you because 
and, and Joe Flacco's not even that good of a quarterback, but he can he can he's sneaky. I, I wouldn't even say sneaky good. He's just he's just sneaky, and he, he has. He's been around the league for a long time, and he knows how to take advantage of a young uh, line that we have, and not to mention uh, the defense that we have. So all, all I can say is if the Colts should just come in there and control the run and be able to just focus on getting a W and get out of there, uh, I think that we'll, we'll, come, we'll come out uh, uh, with a W. Let's uh, start going around the league here. We'll start uh, with Thursday night's game, the Redskins and the Vikings, Vikings uh, on top uh, – Nine to nineteen. At least they were at home in Minnesota as a home into to the Washington Redskins. If I was any any NFL team, I would not want to play, especially in bad weather at, at the Redskins. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, just how bad the Redskins have been. They got caught up in that. They were the first team in NFL history to cover a spread last year, or to cover a spread without scoring a point. They were plus nine and a half to the. 49ers at home, they score zero points and only give up nine. Um, it's a sloppy mess of a season for the Redskins. We saw it again Thursday night. Kirk Cousins playing against his old team. Uh, it wasn't the blowout that I thought it might be, but it ended up being 19-9. to The Vikings are tough. Uh, well, they won four in a row now. Uh, Stephon Diggs, uh, if they get Thielen back. Uh, this, is a, this is a team that it's, it's hard to go to Minnesota and win. This is a team that they can get somehow back into the thing and chase down the Packers. The Vikings are a team that can make them some noise in the playoffs, but yeah, the Redskins are awful, and you know how awful they are when uh, the Nationals in the World Series have two wins so far in the World Series. That's going to be more wins than the Redskins are going to have all season. I tell you what, I know you're a baseball fan too, and I am too. And I, I, I mean, who doesn't want to see their team in it? But if we if we want to root for a a team to root for, the Nationals is the, is the team to root for. And very not very often do I root for a, uh, anything to win from DC. That's for sure. But the Nationals seem to have uh, I, I like it a lot to this to with the Cubs and 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 the attention that the Cubs have, and the, the Nationals haven't won anything since they've been a senator or an expo so it's really an exciting thing to talk about a little bit about the world series but we'll get off the track here a little bit but the astros i think a lot of people thought would be there i mean it was certainly no surprise that the astros were there maybe we were kind of surprised that they were able to get past the yankees uh but the nationals certainly took the national league by surprise yeah they got red hot and we know in in, in postseason baseball in October, it gets cold, it gets windy, it's hard to score runs. They've manufactured runs when they've needed to. They've had great pitching. The bullpen's been exactly what they've needed. Uh, they tied the postseason records for consecutive wins with the 2005 White Sox. Um, yeah, I didn't expect them to win the first two games, I can tell you that, um, to go up 2-0. And, and like you said, it's good to see because you, you haven't seen, most people in their lifetime haven't seen a baseball team out of Washington do anything. Um, like you said, you have to go back to the Expos, the Senators, you know, 70s, early 80s. Um, but I think the Astros are going to bounce back again. They're going to win game four. It's going to be 2-2. Two, two. And uh, honestly, I think that the Astros are going to win every game the rest of the World Series and, and take it back and win their second in three years. Well, you might be absolutely right about that. Certainly, Certainly they've got to – Keep their their, but the good thing about the Nationals is they're young and they can hit home runs, and that it really is kind of friendly for the uh, MLB this year or you know, over the last couple of years. Is if you're able to hit home runs, uh, which just seems to be very home run friendly. So we'll see what happens. But I really would not be surprised if this goes to seven games. But we'll certainly uh, uh, see what happens. Uh, the let's talk a little bit about the NFL again. Going back on that, the NFL. Uh, uh, trade deadlines coming up. It seems to be a bit of a snooze fest. Uh, I think the the Jack Wires, uh trade to uh, the Raiders uh, brain fart, <laughs> uh, but it's been the biggest news out of the um, out of the uh, trade deadline. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think New England going out and getting Muhammad Sanu was was a big pickup. You know. The whole Josh Gordon situation where they got to put him on waivers or trade him by early next week kind of forced their hand to maybe go out and get somebody. And Muhammad Sanu goes from a bad Atlanta team that is without Matt Ryan this weekend, it looks like. It only has one win to uh, Super Bowl contending uh, Patriots. Um, you know, there was a couple, of, you know, Marcus Peters getting traded last week. Jalen Ramsey, obviously the biggest one. Uh, we'll see what that happens. That was we'll who I was thinking. Go out and anybody's. 
they've got a, the Colts got a lot of an abundance of draft picks that they would be 